Welcome to the gorgeous Upper Mississippi Valley region. This area provides a healthy habitat for thousands of plant and animal species native to this environment. There are invaders, however, who threaten the very balance of this finely tuned ecosystem. No, not them. Yep, that's them. These menaces pose a clear and present danger to the delicate ecological balance of the Upper Mississippi River Valley. They go by one name, three words, invasive plant species. Oh, hello. You've heard the words invasive plant species before. Do you know what they really mean? All we've had before this moment is shaky home video footage of people who claim to have seen an invasive plant. Oh, look! Spotted Matt Weed! <laughs> and of course, there were the TV shows. Today we're going to go past sensationalism and give you the real story on invasive plants. We're going to talk about what invasive plants are, what specific types exist in this region, how to identify them, and what you can do to eradicate them. To find these answers, I caught up with a couple of experts on invasive plant species. The first thing I asked them was, what are invasive species? Invasive species is any plant, animal, fungus, bug that is not native to the uh, community that it's, be that it's found in. Say it's uh, from Europe and it's found here in America. Um, and it is free from all of the uh, checks and balances of its original natural community and tends to take over or harm uh, these natural communities that it's found a new home in. Invasive species can also include native species such as cedar trees which in their normal habitat along floodplains or bottomlands they don't cause a problem and don't invade but up in our native prairies when there is an absence of wildfire cedars can encroach in and shade out and crowd out the native species. So now we have a definition, but what are some examples of invasive plant species? Black locust, reed canary grass, sweet clover, buckthorn, honeysuckle, garlic mustard, spotted knapweed which will invade prairies, wild parsnip which also invades prairies. A lot of the invasive species that we have come from Europe and from China. Um, they can come over either uh, by accident, um, say like spotted knapweed was uh, seeds contaminated hay that had been brought over for uh, cattle and such here in the U.S. Uh, but many plants are brought over purposely. People brought plants they found beautiful in their homeland and brought them and planted them here at their new home like purple loosestrife. They also brought over plants like garlic mustard as, as cooking herbs, but most of our plants are actually brought over because uh, for gardening purposes. Uh, people brought them over, put them into botanical gardens, showcased them, and people said, I want that in my yard. Uh, from there, nature kind of takes its course. Uh, water will wash seeds into river systems. River systems take them to larger areas. Birds are a big spreader. They, they like to pick up anything that has a, a berry on it, and then it comes out the other end in another place um, and spreads the plant. Uh, and wind, if the seeds are dispersed by wind, they'll be carried far and wide as well. So now we know what invasive plant species are and what some of them look like, but what makes them so dangerous? One of the reasons that invasive species are such a threat and such a danger to our ecosystems is that they tend to have no natural predators or any checks and balances and we're kind of focusing on plant plant invaders and when a plant invader comes into an area it forms one solid mat and it shades out and crowds out the native vegetation and what you end up with is just a net loss of overall diversity as you lose the native species and um, to keep using honeysuckle as an example birds can use the honeysuckle berries they eat them they roost in the honeysuckle bushes and it you know it looks like it would provide good habitat but in reality some birds some of the generalists like robins use it no problem at all but other birds such as Acadian flycatchers or species like that can't use um, they don't eat the berries they feed on insects and when you have a monospecific stand of honeysuckle you lose a lot of the vegetation that attracts your insects and it causes just a, um, a runaway event where you lose you lose your plant diversity and then you lose your insect diversity and then you lose your bird diversity and it sort of snowballs and you end up with a, um, a very low quality area after those invasives move in and take over. 
Um, some, some invasive species even go so far as to affect the soil. Garlic mustard, for example, will, um, will actually inhibit the growth of seedlings for maples and other hardwoods. And species such as spotted knapweed are allelopathic, which means their roots exude chemicals which um, inhibit the germination of other native species. So it's not just above ground effects, but below ground effects. Yes, the dangers of invasive plants are very real. Just imagine a beautiful forest preserved from human danger, only to fall victim to alien plant life. So what can you do to prevent such ecological turmoil? Run? Panic? None of the above. There are uh, different organizations, Wisconsin DNR for one, that has an excellent website that if you think you might have the, the species or a, an invasive species on the property, you can go to the website. They have great uh, pictures and such uh, that you can look and, and see if the species that you, you have matches one that, that's on the website. Sometimes the uh, county forester is a good option. Uh, sometimes NRCS people see, seem to know quite a bit. Uh, some counties have uh, UW Extension people who are a wealth of knowledge. However, it's not continuous everywhere. The Wisconsin DNR does have a weed watchers program that if you are uh, looking to really start doing battle and identifying new locations and new infestations that you can sign up and become a weed watcher. And there is uh, the Invasive Plants Association of Wisconsin, which has another excellent website and a lot of information about the invasive species that are currently affecting Wisconsin and also those that are set to affect Wisconsin in the near future. Uh, one of the best things a person can do to learn these species is uh, volunteer for an, uh, for an organization like the Mississippi Valley Conservancy uh, to go out and do work and through doing um, restoration work they can learn what these invasive species look like, how to deal with them. A uh, big thing, uh, you can not plant invasive species in your yard if you're into gardening. Look to see, um, especially through the DNR website, that the, the species is not invasive and choose native plants instead of some of these invasive plants. We've got many beautiful, wonderful native plants uh, that are tolerant of a lot of different conditions, so that's another way that you can help. If you think you might have invasive species on your property, there's a couple of things you can look for. The big thing is if you have one solid mat of one particular species, a lot of times you'll see that along roadsides. Um, you'll see mats of crown vetch or bird's foot trefoil. Um, that's usually a good sign that that species is invasive. Another thing that you can look for is if you go into, if you have a woodland, you go in and you may have some kind of shrubs growing around and there's really nothing growing underneath it or on the understory, that's a good sign that that's um, probably not a native species. If you do find a population and you verify that it is something um, invasive, there's usually control methods that you can do. A lot of times it's as simple as just pulling if it's a plant. Um, garlic mustard, sweet clover, a lot of those you can just pull out by hand. Even honeysuckle seedlings um, can be pulled out by hand. Or if you want to get busy with a chainsaw and go out and clear invasive trees and brush, or, or if it's an insect, sometimes you can spray if there's a pesticide listed for it. Um, and a lot of times if you just contact a person who does natural resource restoration work, they can give you good advice and tips on what's the best chemical to use, what's the best timing. It's often good to take a photograph of the plant in question that you can present to um, a person by email or in person. Um, make sure that it's in focus and uh, try to get pictures up close of the leaves so that you can see how they attach to the stem, uh, good pictures of the flowers themselves. Try to get more than just one photograph, uh, that, that's also helpful, but there are a lot of people who are very interested in identifying unidentifiable plants, so it, it's not such a bad thing. Thank you for taking the time to learn some more about invasive plant species of the Upper Mississippi River Valley. If you're not from Wisconsin, but would still like more information on invasive species, check with your local county government or your local DNR. This has been MVC Explorers. If you'd like more information on this video or any of the other videos in our series, contact the Mississippi Valley Conservancy at www dot mississippi valley conservancy dot o r g